Meghan's pal Scobie's queen deserves better rant over Jubilee Balcony Row. Meghan Markle's biographer Omid Scobie has waded into the platinum Jubilee Balcony Row in an 800-word rant. Mr. Scobie's op-ed entitled The Queen Deserves Better for Her Jubilee than Obsessing Over Family Drama was published online on Tuesday. It comes ahead of the monarch's platinum jubilee celebrations in June during which working members of the royal family are expected to join the Queen and younger royals on a balcony at Buckingham Palace for Trooping the Colour. While absent for Trooping the Colour, non-working royal family members such as Harry, Meghan, and Prince Andrew, will be invited to events including a service of thanksgiving at St. Paul's Cathedral. In the article, Mr. Scobie describes the decision about who or who will not appear on the balcony as fuss, adding that the news to only invite working royals should not have come as a surprise to some. He pointed to Prince Charles's decision to limit family members appearing on the balcony at the end of the Queen's Diamond Jubilee celebrations in 2012. Mr. Scobie added that the Platinum Jubilee balcony arrangements solved the dilemma of keeping Prince Andrew at bay. He wrote, as sources say Prince Andrew was eager to stand by his mother during such a poignant and sympathetic scene. Instead, the appropriate image being presented on June 2nd is a lineup of part-time and full-time working family members who are all responsible for continuing the Queen's legacy beyond her reign. Makes sense to me. He went on to suggest that the omission of Harry and Meghan from the balcony lineup has been presented as a snub to the Sussexes, adding that stories about the couple being dramatically cut would have probably felt believable to tabloid readers. Mr. Scobie, citing an unnamed source, explained that the Duke of Sussex had said previously that he and his wife wanted to be part of Jubilee events, but were less keen on appearing on the balcony. He goes on to suggest that the four-day jubilee celebrations might be one of the last opportunities to see the Queen in public. The Duke and Duchess's biographer ends the piece by observing, Members of the royal family are certainly no strangers to drama created by themselves. But, right now, the biggest threat to the jubilee isn't coming from within the Windsors or House Montecito, it's the sections of media hell-bent on joyriding the focus towards soap opera-style drama and embellished tales. Whether you are a royalist or not, Her Majesty deserves better than this. The piece came two days before Daily Express royal correspondent Richard Palmer said the Sussexes could still appear on the balcony of Buckingham Palace. Mr. Palmer said a hint from a royal aide last week suggested a second balcony moment featuring Harry and Meghan could take place after the Platinum Jubilee pageant. Meanwhile, further details of the celebrations have been released with the Queen's famous diamond diadem and jewels set to go on show at royal residences. Set with 1,333 brilliant cut diamonds, the priceless crown was made for George IV's coronation in 1821. It has been worn numerous times by the monarch during her historic reign and is probably the most well recognized of all her pieces of jewelry. The Queen usually wears the diadem for her journey to and from the state opening of Parliament. It will be on view with other historic jewelry in the state rooms of Buckingham Palace during the Royal Collection's summer opening from July 22 to October 2 as part of an exhibition exploring the Queen's accession. In 1952, just days after she acceded to the throne, the Queen wore the diadem for official portraits by Dorothy Wilding. These formed the basis for the monarch's image on millions of postage stamps from 1953 to 1971. A selection of 24 of Wilding's historic photographs from the sessions will also be on display.
Buckingham Palace during the Royal Collection's summer opening from July 22 to October 2 as part of an exhibition exploring the Queen's accession. In 1952, just days after she acceded to the throne, the Queen wore the diadem for official portraits by Dorothy Wilding. These formed the basis for the monarch's image on millions of postage stamps from 1953 to 1971. A selection of 24 of Wilding's historic photographs from the sessions will also be on display.